Hello there YouTube, Devin here again, and uh, today uh, I have a gas mask video for you. Um, now this probably looks really really weird if you collect gas masks, because um, this is actually one of the first gas masks. And um, gas masks kind of came about in World War I, around that era. Well, they were probably around before that, but they really developed in World War I. And, um, looking at all the gas masks in World War I, uh, arguably the best gas mask came out of, um, a country you wouldn't expect. Uh, because they weren't involved a lot as far as chemical warfare goes, but they actually had one of the best gas masks. Now, um, if you know anything about me, you know I really like playing airsoft, and, uh, I really, really like, uh, reenacting. And, um, I do World War I Russian reenactment is my primary I do some World War II and stuff like that. Um, but what we have here for you is um, a Russian World War I gas mask and its carrier. Now, what it is, is it's essentially a three-piece system. There's the main body of the gas mask, which is also the filter. There's a cover to protect the mask itself. And then there's the mask itself, which is under this cover, which is connected to the main body. Now, um, I just keep this knot tied in it, um, so I can hook it and it, I know it won't come apart, because this gas mask works really well because of what's inside of it. Now, if I shake it, you could probably hear that, that kind of rattling, and, um, you can see the paper wedged in here, and the reason I have paper wedged in both ends is not because, you know, I'm trying to keep the gas mask filter fresh or anything like that, because you, you shouldn't use this in the event of a, a chemical attack or anything like that, this would not be a very good prepper's gas mask, but it's just because this gas mask, of uh, what it's made out of, tends to leak and it creates a huge mess. Now, how the Russians, like, it's gonna sound really stereotypical here, developed this gas mask, is this gas mask was developed based off of the filters used to distill vodka. Um, so what a lot of distillers at the time used to filter vodka was charcoal. So this gas mask was leaps and bounds ahead of a lot of other gas masks because it just used a ton of active charcoal. And now if you know anything about active charcoal is like if you ingest poison, a lot of times if you go to the hospital, they will make you eat active charcoal because it neutralizes a lot of the poison. And the same goes with chemicals in the air. So as you would breathe air through this filter, the active charcoal would pull all the toxins out of the air. So it worked really, really well. And um, that's why they had one of the better gas masks in World War I is because they were very cheap. They didn't rely on counter chemical uh, agents in their gas masks to break down the chemicals. They used active charcoal, which is readily available and quite cheap. Um, so, and uh, in traditional Russian fashion, it came from vodka. Vodka was the solution to the, to the chemical attacks in World War I. Um, but it worked out quite well. Now, um, here is the label on it. So if you read, if you read Cyrillic, uh, here's the label for you. You can pause and read it if you want. There's the label on the top cover. Now, normally this would be worn just kind of like slung over your shoulder or on your back or anything like that. It had this convenient, uh, carrying strap on it. Um... Any way you really wanted to carry it, there wasn't a standard way to carry it. I've seen in lots of different pictures, there was lots of different ways to carry this gas mask. And some people chose not to carry it once the war became, once Russia kind of started to lose the war and it became more of a war of movement, a lot of these were ditched. Uh, because there are, there are a lot of bulky, unnecessary excess weight. This is very heavy as far as gas masks go. But um, So we'll, we'll open it up here for you if I can get it open with one hand. Uh, and uh, we'll show you what the actual mask looks like. Now, this isn't an original. This is a reproduction. Um, and how you would don it very quickly, obviously, is I'm, I'm not doing this as quickly as I can because I'm one-handed. Um, but you would pull this top cover off, okay? And you would let that just fall. And you would throw this, this mask on over your head. Um, it's basically just rubber. And now, as you can see, it's got lots of active charcoal all over it now. Um, but it's basically just a big kind of surgical rubber, uh, mask, and then it has kind of like rubber taped, uh, glass, uh, eyes in it. So it's actually, uh, pretty easy to see out of it. It's got a spot for your nose, 
uh, which has been reinforced with that same kind of tape so you don't tear through it. Uh, it's basically just held on with a rubber band um, so to keep it uh, to keep a good seal and it it worked quite well. Um, it's one arguably one of the better gas masks of World War One, and um, it was pretty well liked. It even it served up until after World War One, and uh, pretty much up into the 30s before being replaced. Uh, these were still with some reserve units. This type of gas mask. Um, so, but I figured I'd show you guys this. You guys that are into to gas masks a lot, and um, into World War One a lot, and into Russian stuff, because if you're like me, I like Russian stuff, but I really like Russian World War One reenacting, and I got a whole bunch of other stuff if you guys ever wanted to see my my full-on Russian World War One kit. Um, I have all that stuff, and I might do a video on that if there's enough interest in it, so hopefully you like this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and um, if you like this sort of thing, please uh, like and subscribe. Um, I do my best to try to give you some history and information behind all this stuff, um, instead of just doing a review on it. But there are some videos where I'll just give my, my opinions on things. Um, so, but if you like, if you like history, uh, and seeing the history behind all of my objects that are the main focus of, uh, all my videos, I, I try to do pretty good at explaining the history and compare it to some of its, um, counterparts, um, its predecessors and successors, usually. Um, so, but uh, if you like that sort of thing, uh, please like and subscribe, because most of my videos will have something like that, uh, if I have the ability to do that. So, uh, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.